welcome, welcome. All right. So to start with, everybody had some kind of a surface or a board, and um, I had the, um, this is a, a cutting board that I did the original on here. So let me switch over to my over camera. Uh, I'm assuming everybody got a chance to go ahead and base coat your surface. I really love using the uh, stain blocker sealer from DecoArt. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to try this, uh, put it on your wish list. It really is nice for sealing the wood. Um, it doesn't have that tacky feel that some of the sealers have that um, I've used in the past for a wood sealer. It, like it blends into the wood nicer. Um, sometimes when the sealer is too slippery or tacky, it affects the paint that you put on top of it. So I really, really like this one for sealing. So that's what I sealed my cutting board with. I put one coat of that on, I sanded in between, and then I used the DecoArt uh, Green Lagoon to um, base coat mine. I did two kind of heavy coats, uh, just using a large one inch brush, and sanded in between with fan, uh, fine sandpaper. Um, the design, I just centered it best I could on my cutting board and traced it on with the graphite paper and a uh, stylus. Okay, uh, I didn't transfer the chop chop because that's all going to get base coated in. Okay, I actually did my stenciling last. Normally, um, a lot of people like to do that first, but if you get any ridges underneath your piece because you used your uh, paint and stencil too heavy, it's gonna show through. Uh, and I didn't want that, so I did do my stenciling last. So we're gonna go ahead and start right in with our little guy here and get him base coated in. Um, to start with, I've got, a variety of brushes that I'm using here. I do have uh, the Jelly Bean Dirty Dancers that I'm going to be using, and I'll show you how to use those. Uh, you can um, use a round brush and a blender brush instead of this if you don't have these. Uh, if you don't have a dry brush blender, uh, another option would be to maybe try a filbert brush. Uh, something that you can just soften and blend with, okay? Um, so <clears throat> we've got those, and then we're going to need a rake brush. I like to use the black silver, and I actually have trimmed mine down to a one-eighth. Um, I could use the quarter inch and just kind of use a corner of it to work, but I do a lot of small things like... Um, the uh, uh, ornaments and smaller pieces. So I've actually taken a scissors and I chopped off right at the base, uh, right where the ferrule is and chopped off some on each side to make a smaller brush, okay? Uh, you'll also need, um, I like angle brushes. If you prefer a flat brush, you sure can. So I've got the black gold half inch and quarter inch angles. So you'll need those. Uh, and then we won't need our stencil brush until uh, the end of the project. And it, just about any size is gonna work. Sometimes if I know I'm gonna have to get close to an area, I will use a smaller one. Uh, just because it makes it easier to not go into your painted area, okay? But we'll save those for last. Okay, so paper towels, palette, water, um, and then I think we're all set to go. Okay, so easy, easy to start with. All we need to do is start base coating things in. Um, the hat is uh, our coral color. Now, sometimes I find that, let's see, and where's my coral? Okay. Uh, sometimes I find if it's not, if I'm not getting a good coverage, I like to undercoat it with a, um, like an off-white. 
I've got uh, Traditions Medium White that I'm going to use. You could use uh, like a parchment, you could use bleach sand, um, you could, you know, anything that's an off-white will help the other transparent colors show up better. So if you have never tried the Traditions before, they now are in a tube, um, as, and I still have some of my bottles left, so I'll be using those up too. When you use the tube, when, when you first open it up, it does have a, um, a seal underneath this cap. If you peel that seal off, I have found that too much paint is squirting out. So if you will take your stylus and just poke a hole into that seal, you are better off. You're not going to get so much coming out at one time. It'll be uh, a little bit more controlled. Okay, so I'm going to just start with my medium white and go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and base coat the uh, top and the band all with the medium white. So I'll use my big angle brush and get that all, just get that all filled in best you can. Nice around the edges. There we go. And we'll let that dry before we put the coral up on the top. Um, the um, nose and the feet are going to be um, warm beige and that's uh, the flesh color. Now, originally, uh, just for your own information, uh, it used to be called flesh tone. So you're going to see a lot of my packets, older packets, that call it by the original name. They switched the name uh, to Warm Beige, so they're ex the exact same color. Um, and I think they have the, ex yeah, they have the exact same um, item number as well. Now we're going to try and see if uh, I can do it just with this color and not have to undercoat it. I'll, and I'll definitely want a second coat on the band of my hat, but let that dry. Um, when we go to do the top of the hat for our second coat, we'll go right to the coral, but let those dry in between. Okay, so the warm beige, I'm going to switch to my small round brush now for doing the nose and the feet. And right now we're just basing in. Once we get to more detail, I will zoom in a little bit better so you see more of the detail on each area. And we're going to need a couple coats on these, but I apply it a little bit thick. And for this piece, I don't mind if there's a hint of the turquoise in the flesh tones. Get his piggy toes. And don't worry, you can always, you know, touch up when you go outside of the lines. I'm not a real precise painter. I believe in going back and touching up and cleaning up if I have to. I'm going to get his heel. Okay, and then what I, and I think I will zoom in a little bit here. I am going to pull some of that flesh I'm, I want to pull it kind of raggedy up into the beard area so that when I go to do the beard, it'll be an easier transition to pull the hair over that foot. So fill in the heel with the flesh, but instead of leaving a hard line, pull some of that up. 
That way we won't have a ridge. Okay, now I know I'll need a second coat on those, but I'll let that be for now. Okay, now the bread is also going to be marigold, but I think I'm going to undercoat that with the medium white as well. So I'll just use the round brush and just fill in because most yellows are transparent colors. And so it's good to have a little undercoating. Okay, also the uh, handle on the knife, I'm gonna undercoat. That's gonna be marigold also. So I'm gonna undercoat that. And the only other thing, uh, two things to base coat is the knife and the mittens. Now you can make his hands or his mittens any color you want. Um, I used uh, Brilliant Purple for mine in the Americana. And then I used Slate Gray for the knife. So I'm gonna take out a little bit of each of those. So slate gray, so any kind of gray. It's just kind of a middle of the road gray color. You could mix black and white and come up with a gray. So I'll do the mittens. The brilliant purple. And it looks like it's covering pretty good. You may want a second coat on it. Uh, just let it dry in between. The uh, knife blade is the slate gray. Any kind of gray color is gonna be fine. Now, if you're not real good about getting that jaggedy edge, you can take your uh, background color after and come back and clean up those because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do that myself. So I'm just filling in the knife blade with the slate gray. Let's see, what else can we base coat? How about um, the sandal straps? are also uh, going to be coral. So I think I'm going to undercoat those 
with the uh, medium white as well. They, they're so, it's so small, it, it probably would have shown up just fine, but. Just gonna fill that in. It's been really fun designing the gnomes. And each of my gnomes, I try to do a totally different footwear, kind of as my signature piece. So it's really been kind of fun working on those. And the Chop Chop gnome that I'm demonstrating here today, this was the first of a series of gnomes that were born and they were just a lot of fun. Okay. Um, if you look closely at your um, color picture um, or your step by step, you're going to see that um, the smaller areas, let me get a little closer here. The smaller areas in the shoe, you've got the very bottom of the shoe, and that can be either burnt sienna or burnt umber, and I believe I use burnt sienna. There's a little bit of black uh, underneath, which uh, the toes and the feet, which is like the sole of the shoe, and then I did purple for the heel. Now the purple, I mixed a little bit of white into it to make it a, a a lighter color purple than what the mittens are. So you can put just a touch of your medium white in there since that's already out, just to lighten it up a little bit. Um, I could have used uh, lavender. I could have used, um, oh, there's a color purple petal. That probably would have worked. Purple petal would have worked. So that one's already mixed, but um, rather than take another color out, I'll just go ahead and use what I've got out here. Okay, uh, before I do the feet, because I want to get to these top parts, I'm going to concentrate. Mine is dry up here. So I'm going to go ahead and get my second coat up there. Uh, the feet don't need to be done immediately. So let's go back up to our hat. I want to put the uh, coral, deco art coral, on the top of the hat and another coat of medium white on the rim or the base. So I'll go back to my larger brush. I'll get the coral. We'll see how many coats we need. If I can just do one heavy coat, that would be nice. Get that all filled in nice and solid. And I want to smooth it. Uh, in fact, when I'm basing this in, I have two choices. I can either smooth it from top to bottom, or I can do a slip slap and make it, but either one, you've got to make it consistent throughout the hat. If I stop in the middle and start pulling from the middle, I'm going to get brush marks right in the middle. So I've got to come back, pull smoothing strokes all the way from the very top to the very bottom and don't stop in between. I can kind of slip slap it on to begin with, but then come back and pull your smooth strokes. And if you haven't had a chance to watch my granddaughter video, video that's on the Dynasty Brush YouTube channel, you can also find it on my website. 
uh, jellybean.net in the video section, she will show you, you've got to paint very carefully. <laughs> So I'm just smoothing it and I'm going to stay out of there. And I think I'm going to get by with just the one coat on mine. We're going to let that dry real good. I'm going to put another coat. Of the medium white on the band. Okay, well, let's keep going. I'm going to uh, go back and do more basing in on the foot. So I'm going to need my burnt sienna. Don't need much. And I'm going to need some black. Don't need much of that either. Um, Oh, actually, um, I think before I worry about those others, I will put another coat on my flesh areas, so my nose, using the warm beige, small round brush, and the piggy toes, get another coat. So we're just base coating all the main areas. And uh, these are all the areas that you see on your step-by-step -step page. So we're just on step one so far. Um, we undercoated the hat with um, medium white and then put coral on top. We um, are doing the nose and the feet with warm beige, two coats. We undercoated the bread and the knife handle with warm beige, or I mean, not warm beige, medium white, sorry. Uh, did brilliant purple on the mittens, slate gray on the knife blade. And now we're continuing on with the uh, little section. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and put um, Burt Sienna on the bottoms of the sandals. It was just kind of fun doing the Birkenstocks on this guy. Get that filled in, and I probably only need one coat for that. And then I'm going to do the heel. Um, I'm going to use a little bit lighter purple, so I'm just going to mix some of my medium white and brilliant purple together. It just has to be a color you like, and you want it to show up. So um, any any color. It just needed a little something on that back of that shoe when I was painting it. Um, it just needed a little bit more color back there than leaving it 
you know, the rest of the color like the rest of the shoe should have been. Okay, and then let's see the very front of the toes. I've got black under there. Now, if you need to switch to a liner brush, a script brush, you sure can. Sometimes I'm able to get a fine enough point on this uh, pointed round side of my Dirty Dancer that I'm able to just use that. So I'm doing the part under the feet. So that helps to separate it. There's just more like a little line on this left foot. Little black line under the flesh area between the purple and the heel. And then under the toes. Now I can do the straps with the coral. Just get the, all of that filled in on both feet, coral for the straps. The uh, bread and the handle are gonna be filled in with uh, marigold or any kind of a gold, kind of a yellowy gold color that you might have. So I've got the Decoart Marigold that I'm gonna be using. And my knife blade looks like it's fine with one coat, so I'm not gonna do that again, but if you were a little skimpy with your paint, go ahead and get a second coat on that too. So the bread and the knife handle, marigold on top of the medium white. And you can see that you're gonna get a much better coverage now because you undercoated it with that other color. Okay, and then uh, check your hat, make sure that you've got um, enough coverage that you're happy with the color on top of your hat. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of a shadowy effect. Um, it just kind of adds to the depth of it, um, but you don't want big patches. Um, and I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see, I mean, you can, I can see little, little hints of a, a coloration variance in mine, but not enough to, that I feel I need another coat. It'll just add to the shadows in the hat. So I'm good with just that one heavy coat that I put on. And then I think okay, so we're gonna do um, a rake brush. Now, if you have a, um, a quarter inch, you can make that work. Um, if you have one, you can cut down. It'll work even better in small areas. But I tell you what, I will go ahead and start with the uh, quarter inch myself just to show you you can do it. How's that? Also have a small um, or whatever your skinniest liner would be um, so that if you need to do little touch-ups or get into littler areas uh, that you can't quite reach with your rake, have some kind of a liner and it could be a, a, a 20 aught, 10 aught, or even a 5 aught for your liner, just anything skinny. Okay.
Now, when you look at uh, the step-by-step -step photo here, and you look at uh, base not number one, I want you to notice that it's not necessarily all individual lines, okay? This is the undercoating, all right? So it's, it's not the fine lines that you're gonna see at the end, all right? Um, it, but you wanna be able to see some of that turquoise that green lagoon or whatever your base coat color, you wanna see some of that showing through um, because the combination of the turquoise and the lavender and the whites all together in the end make the beard really pretty. We wanna see a little bit of everything. Now, if, if we get carried away, obviously we can certainly go back and add you know, some of the uh, turquoise or whatever back in. But just know that this is not base coated in solid. And we're not, if we don't get skinny, skinny lines at this stage, that's okay too. All right. Okay, so, so I like to start with the mustache because then I stay out of it. It's kind of like a, a mental thing for me that I, I know to stay away from it then when I do the rest of the beard. Um, We'll thin down our medium white or unbleached sand, whatever your off-white color is that you chose. I thin it down. It's about half and half, half paint, half water. Okay. And you want to be able to see all the little individual tips. Now, if you don't already have the black silver rake brushes, I can highly highly recommend these you can see i didn't have to do anything to separate those tips okay and they're inexpensive brushes so they retail for like i think it's 360 a piece no matter what shape or size the entire line so if you're looking for a line of brushes uh, to let your grandkids use or even if you're working on um even if you're working on, uh, you know, rougher surfaces, these are all 360 a piece. So there's all different shapes and sizes in that line. Now, will they last as long as your fine art, fine art brushes? Probably not, but you know what? This, these are the ones I pull out for the kids. And it's the ones I use on fabric because you know how the fabric wrecks your brushes so uh, or other rough surfaces however the rake brushes they seem to last forever I have not had a problem with any of those wearing out okay so half paint half water and I just want to pull in the direction of the mustache okay and I'm not worried about um, filling in because I want to see you know, some of the, some of the hairs, I wanna make sure that I get my brush in. So normally I would have my, my handle straight up towards the ceiling, all right? And I wanna make sure you can see my, my bristles. And I want little fuzzy ends eventually on the tips of the mustache, but at this stage, um, anything is fine. No pressure whatsoever. No pressure. Yeah, barely tickle with the tips. So I'm going to do the mustache and I don't want to do any more than that. I still want to be able to see, I want to be able to see my turquoise color showing through. All right, so that is not filled in solid. I'm not worrying about graphite lines, not at this stage. I'm just getting some within the area of the mustache. Then I'm gonna go on and do the same thing for the beard. Same color. Um, and now, if I wanna get into a skinny area, I can turn the brush a little bit more sideways. In fact, let me show you on a piece of paper here. I'm going to, I'll use another color because of course it's white paper. Let me do, a, I'll just use the purple. Thin it. Okay, so when you're using the rake brush and you barely pull on the tips, all right, 
Okay, when you first set it down, you've got like this square. Okay, now if I take my brush, twist it halfway, see how I can get a, a skinnier stroke? Okay, flat, I get a wide stroke. Twist it halfway, I can get a skinnier stroke so I can get into little areas better. Does that make sense? Now, I didn't do it all the way chisel edge. If I do chisel edge, I'm going to get a more solid line. So it's got to be that in between, like 45 degree angle when you're pulling. Okay, so go back to my medium white, thin it with some water. And just tuck in the little hairs. Don't worry if you're not pulling it all the way top to bottom. This is the undercoat stage. So this will get covered up. And I can pull from the bottom up. So whatever direction is easier to get your brush into those areas. And don't worry too much about the little flip curls. We'll make those more distinguished with um, a liner brush at the end. But you just need a little touch, a little color in there if you can sneak it in. And that looks good enough for the first stage. Uh, you'll notice that some areas I may have gotten a little more solid than others. There again, at this stage, it does not matter. This is not your fine detail. But we want to see hints of that turquoise showing through There's definitely. Shading. So step number two, we're going to start shading all of the areas. So um, up in the hat, I'd like to get started with that. If you need a little more time for the coral to dry, I can actually start on the band and then we can go to the coral after if anyone needs more time for that to dry. So um, I believe it was marigold that I used on the sides. Let me just double check my marigold. Yep, on both sides. Now, when you go to use, do your shading, you have choices. You can do a corner load and do like a float, or you can use my double-ended brush um, and uh, do a blending technique, and I'm gonna show you both. So I do like to use, um, the Decoward Extender Blending Medium when I'm working, no matter if I am floating color or doing the Dirty Dancer blending method. Uh, it, it gives me more time to blend. The only thing is I try not to overuse it. Uh, I think a lot of times people get in trouble because they're using too much of it. And so I'm gonna give you some little tips on how to maybe tone that down. Now I know that there's other brands out there, so um you know use what you've got if you don't have a extender blending medium you could try moistening the surface just with water that might also work so i'm going to put a little bit of this in a little cup and i i still have some in the uh bottle but it comes in a jar now just going to squeeze some into a little cup here i'm going to use my large dirty dancer uh, because it's a bigger area that I'm going to work in. Now, you have a choice, depending on your area. Um, if it's really dry in your environment, sometimes I have to moisten the surface. Uh, but otherwise, I try to just use it in my brush and my paint. And you're going to find different surfaces make a difference. Um, I use less on wood, more on canvas. MDF board even less because there's nothing to soak into if so so the uh, more porous the surface the more I might have to use if that makes sense okay so I'm going to start by dipping both ends of my brush in the extender 
and wiping them off on a paper towel. Okay, and I see that this I did not clean real good, so I'm gonna clean it now. I go in a circle with the uh, blender side of the brush, rub it in a circle, and that'll help to clean it. I should have cleaned it good with soap and water after my last session, but I didn't, so I'll just use the extender and just really get that off of there, okay. Then um, I'm gonna use the uh, marigold. Now mine has been sitting out here. I need just a drop of extender in there instead of water to loosen it up because it was already getting pretty dry on my palette. And I kind of plump the brush up. I'm not just scooping up a little on the end, I'm plumping it up into the middle of the brush. Okay, and then I'm going to use it and I'm going to decide how far over I want my shadow and I'm going to put it on solid on the outside edge. And I want to come over about a third of the way. So filling it in solid up to that point. Completely solid. Okay, then I'm going to flip my brush over pointing the brush towards the edge that I want to soften and just barely catch that edge. Now, if I need to pull the, the paint out, I would pull. If it's right where I want it to be, I'm going um, horizontal or uh, vertical, I mean, with the, uh, and I'm not going to go all the way over into the deepest shadow area. I only want to catch that front edge and soften it and just a very soft touch. In between time, if I need to clean the blender brush, I'm gonna do it in a circle on my paper towel because you're always picking up paint. Just barely soften, don't put any pressure down. You put pressure down, you're gonna dig into the paint. And there again, the other method would, would have been to do a corner load and then walk the color in towards the center with a corner load of a angle brush or a, or a flat brush. And I can show you that too. I'll do that on the other side, angle brush. Okay, so if I was gonna float the color on with a corner load, I would dip it in the extender. Okay, really, really fill the brush with the extender, blot it, on my paper towel, get a corner load, and I pick up a good amount. I pick up a good amount on one corner. Wipe the extra off a little bit on the palette, and then go ahead and blend that along the edge. But you're gonna have to keep walking it more towards the center to pull that in further. Okay, so you can do either way. If, I don't know if you can tell, but I got a heavier, I'm able to get a heavier coat doing it with a dirty dancer. I might have to do a second coat if I do the corner loaded float. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a, another coat on right now. So you're welcome to use either method throughout the piece. Then we're going to be going to the upper hat after. So we'll need a, another color out for that. Scarlet is what I used. Um, and Scarlet is like a reddish orange color. It just has to be something deeper than what you have already base coated on your hat. I'm not a stickler for exact colors. If you've got colors that are light, medium, and dark, you can make them work. So it's got to be a color darker than what you already have. Uh, another option would be to mix some red into your base coat color. That would make a deeper uh, color as well. Okay. All right. So now for 
the um, on the hat, I'm going to start by doing the um, uh, the folds. I'll do the folds first. Now, eventually, it's going to get darker across the bottom, but I'm going to do these stripy folds first, and then I'll connect a shadow across the bottom that'll help blend them all together. And then the last part will be to add some little dips in the top of the hat. But um, for the folds, if you feel you need a little guideline or a little help, you certainly could, you know, draw a couple of curvy lines where you want your folds to be. And so these are just really exaggerated kind of S, S strokes you know, have some, some long, some short, some in between. And I give them a little bit of a hook at the top um, rather than stopping so abruptly, but I want them all at different lengths and pull some a little taller there just to create more interest. So if you want to draw on, uh, otherwise, you, I mean, you can just wing it too with your with your lines creating the the different different folds. Now you'll notice that on the right I curved the top off to the right, on the left I curved the top off to the left. So I did like three on each side. And just use a pencil, chalk pencil, something to give you a little guideline. Okay. Now I never did wash my brush because it had extender in it. I'm okay. If I would have just had paint in here, I would not have been able to set my brush down. This would all, that would have wrecked my brush. Okay. Uh, another thing uh, with the um, Dirty Dancers, you can um, actually uh, put extender in them and then reshape them and store them that way. The extender will kind of condition the bristles. And then you can also, if you need to, you could cut a little piece of straw, put a slit and stick it over the ends for storing it if you want to. So um, now that I'm at home, I'm just laying mine down. But when I travel, uh, I would have a brush pouch. And in the brush pouch, I put the blender side down in the pouch. This is the most sturdier side of the brush. And then I'm going to load the scarlet on my brush. And there again, I'm really plumping it up, really patting it in. I'm not, I can't just dab a little on it and, and expect it to work. I've got to fill that brush with paint, really plump it up. And I'm not wiping it off. I want it full of paint. So I'm not going to wipe that out. Okay, so then I'll just start with, with whatever one feels comfortable. I'm going to make a nice great big fat line. Come back and just catch that one edge. Just gently soften that one edge. As I pick up paint on my blender, I'm going to stop and wipe it off on my paper towel, otherwise I end up with too much paint on my brush. So I'll just soften the top and just come down that side. Now, if I mess into my lower area, I can actually take just a clean brush and crop that right off. Just the chisel edge and it'll come off because there, we've got the extender in the paint, it's more forgiving. Now you can get uh, all different sizes in the dry brush blenders also. So if you don't like using the double-ended brush, you can certainly use, I'm gonna tip this just because so, there's shine there. You can certainly use the dry brush blenders um grab a couple here they come in all different sizes uh from this is a four a six and they go all the way up to a 14 
Um, so these are really handy to have on hand as well for any of your blending. I find that a mop is too soft to do the blending. You could use the mop to soften brush strokes after, uh, but for the main blending, it's just too soft. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. As I need to, um, I'm not cleaning my brush ever. As long as I need this color, I'm gonna just continue um, with the same brush load. However, you're gonna notice at a point where it starts getting tacky stop and get a little drop of extender on the brush and mix that into your paint and it'll loosen up what's on the brush also it'll loosen it all back up again so instead of using water we normally we would have done that with water i'm just doing it with the extender but just do small amounts okay so i'm going to do another stripe here way up so they're all at a different length flip my brush and soften down that edge pulling down just barely catching it don't dig in because you'll take too much off wipe your brush on a paper towel in between to get the excess off now the reason I had uh, Dynasty make me this double-ended brush is because for this step, I was constantly putting the other brush in my mouth. And this way I can just flip it over and keep going. Okay, so before we go any further, I wanna make sure that this is working for anybody, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions. Now, could I have done this with the float? Absolutely, I could have. So if this is not working for you, I want you to do a floated, a corner loaded float if that feels better. The, the whole idea is just trying new things to find what works best for you. Okay, so, okay, so I'll do one more stripe, flip the brush over, and soften that edge. Now, the other thing that this does is it allows me to get it done in one coat, where in order to get enough uh, paint when you're floating color, a lot of times you gotta do two coats. So I can put the exact amount of color on that I want in the darkest areas in one coat, and then I'm not uh, having to waste so much time re-going over areas. Now, because it's always easier to point your brush towards the area that you wanna blend, for the other side, I'm gonna turn it upside down because I wanna be able to point my brush towards the side I wanna blend. So I'll go to the other side and do the other stripes. Soften that edge. If your paint ever gets too dry and you can't make it move, put a touch more extender on your blending brush because the extender will reactivate the dry paint. And if I were to have moistened the um, surface first, then I probably would have used my blender side totally dry because then you would end up with too much extender. So if you do feel you want to moisten, then keep your blender brush dry. I'll get a couple more stripes on this side. And sometimes when I'm blending quickly, it looks like I'm putting pressure down, but I'm not. I'm using a very, very, very soft touch. 
I'll get one more in here. Okay, now, if I wanted it to be a softer edge, I could come back on the other side. I could have done that while it was wet and soften that as well. So it depends on what piece you're working on. Um, can you have a hard edge on it or do you need to have it just a, a soft fold where there's no definite you know, edge or crease? This guy could be either one because um, it's just a whimsical painting. You just have to like it. Okay, so up on top, I want to create some dents uh, in the top. It'll give it just a little bit more depth. Anywhere it might dip in is a good spot. So I'm going to make um, like skinny, fat, skinny, okay, right along that top edge, and then just soften that bottom edge, but nice dark along the very top edge. And, and if I wanted it to be a definite crease, I could make it like a little tornado coming in, but I'm just making these little soft indents. So pick a few spots to add some dents in the top and make them all different. Don't have them all exactly the same size. You want a nice little variety. So make some big, and then maybe I'll make a little one here, make it a little smaller. And if you made a nice smooth rounded top, just create dents anywhere. It doesn't matter. Um, just add, you know, skinny, fat, skinny. So some of it comes in deeper. Get some along the side here too, if you want. Just catching the edge. And I don't know if you're noticing, but I'm not pouncing. I'm, I'm kind of stroking. I'm not going pouncing because that'll, uh, like a stipple effect, that'll give pock marks or that'll give you um, more texture. Now, if you want more texture, then that would be a way to go. Sometimes if it's a, a furry hat, you might want to do that, you know, to blend. Okay, so the bottom edge of the sandals. I'm just going to come right across that bottom edge. Now you might want to switch to your smaller blender now that I said that, but I, I think you can maybe catch it. Just barely catch that edge. So just straight across where it touches the burnt sienna. Right on the coral area, bottom edge of the coral. Turn this around so I can reach better. And then just soften the top edge of that line. Barely catch it. Now, anyone that was used to working with oils, to me, this just kind of feels like a little more like an oil technique for blending. The thing is, though, it dries faster than an oil, so you can do your other colors on top after. I think the next thing that we'll do is the bread and the handle of the knife. And that, I believe, was... Yeah, burnt sienna, but I want you to use the burnt sienna very, very sparingly. Now mine's pretty dried up. I'm going to put just a touch more back out. 
little touch of burnt sienna. When you look at um, the bread, you're going to notice that um, the burnt sienna wash is more dominant on the left side, just a hint of it to catch the edge on the right side. But I also pull little sections in to st start creating those holes where the uh, bread has been sliced, you know, to create that the indented areas. So we're going to start with kind of a wash. I still like using my Dirty Dancer. And I'm going to thin the burnt sienna with some of the extender. A little more transparent this time, though. OK. And I'm going to start. I'll come down the left side first. So just make like a wide stripe, but see, it's pretty transparent. Flip the brush and soften. Now, this doesn't have to be as smooth of an area because it's the bread. It's okay for this to have more texture. So you don't have to blend this or smooth it as much as some of the other areas. So I come down the one side, then I'm going to just at an angle, start pulling some stripes in. Don't worry about having it exact like the pattern. Pull in some stripes, some sections, and then I just want to soften where I left off. I don't need to soften the whole thing, just the stopping point. So pull in some stripes and then just soften where you ended with that stripe. Along the right side, it's just an outline. So I outline it, but then I soften that inside edge so it doesn't look outlined. There again, it doesn't have to be as smooth. Um, it's okay to have it a little blotchy. It'll add to the texture of the bread. And on the knife handle, you just need to do the right side. So same color. Just a little bit wide stripe coming down and then soften that inside edge. And if you soften it too much and all the color disappears, just go back right away and try it again. Because it happens. Okay, so the left side of the blade, we're going to pull black and then across the bottom. But there again, more of a wash. Then we're going to take a liner and we're going to make little lines on the underside of each one of those um, jaggedy edges, just a line, uh, just to kind of create, start creating some depth in that blade. So we're going to just use black. Thin it with a little bit of extender or water. And I'm just going to come down that. I need a little fresh black out, I guess. Mine, for some reason, is drying faster today than normal. 
Okay, a little bit of black and I'll put a little touch of extender in there. And I'm gonna come down the one edge of the blade, across the bottom and then soften that. Okay, and I'm actually going to switch to my smaller Dirty Dancer because I'm having a hard time getting that great big blender inside that smaller area. So I put extender on the blender brush and then I'm able to soften and blend that. Kind of wipe the excess off. Okay, then I'm going to just switch to a liner brush and for liner brush work, unless I needed to blend the line, I only use water. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add those little black lines on the bottom edge of each of those little jaggedy marks. And as long as I've got the liner out, I might as well outline that bottom edge of those shoes as well. And that was with, or not the bottom edge, but the sides of the straps with a scarlet. So it looks like I did this front edge. Get a little more in camera the front edges and let's see, did I go across? I don't think I did. I think I, I think I just did the front edges. I think it's the shading in the feet that is the other. And then I, so it's the, on this one I did the back edges. And that was just thinning it with water if you need to. Um, actually, I was able to just use the paint straight from the bottle. I didn't need to thin it for that. It actually worked out just now, fine. Um, for the um, shading color on the nose and the feet, I just mix that warm beige and burnt sienna together half and half. Okay, it just has to be darker than what you've already got. Now that did not show up as good in the camera and I am gonna put a drop of extender into that paint as well. And I'm gonna to switch to my, I'm switching to my smaller brush. So if you're using an angle or a flat, use a smaller one. Make sure my blender brush is clean. Okay, so on the nose, I'm doing like a C shape and just getting on the left side, and then I'm gonna blend that. So C shape on the left side of the nose and then soften. And when we go to shade the feet, it's gonna be easier to look at um, the step-by-steps -step on the feet. Okay, now, Step number two, this photograph really is kind of pale. I honestly, I think it'd be better to go ahead and look at the very last one to see where the shadow goes on the feet and the toes, okay? 
So you'll notice that this same uh, flesh color that we just mixed, it's going to go on the bottom of the heel. It's going to go in the bottom of that little section between the straps and then the bottom edge of the toes or the front edges of the toes. And then later we'll be separating those with toenails and some outlines. So on the feet, I'm going to catch the bottom of the heel and then soften that. I'm going to catch between the straps and soften. And then I'll get the bottom of the toes on this one, or just that one big toe, actually. Kind of the same on the other side. Get the bottom of the heel. And I need to turn my piece upside down so that I can reach my shadow area better. between the straps and then I'm going to do the front edge of each of those toes and it's a gnome, he can have four or five, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be exact. Kind of soften that, and then also across the bottom edge on the side. So the shading color, there used to be a color called shading flesh that um, no longer exists. So this is almost exact. So just half burnt sienna, half warm beige, you get the same color. So there again, any of my older packets, if it calls for shading flesh, you just do this mix and it's exactly the same. We're, we're going to be blending some white in the center area here to try to bump that up a little bit. We're going to put a little bit of white in the middle of his nose on off to the side. We're going to add some white inside the top edge of each of those areas where the bread is cut. We're going to add a white um, edge to the uh, front edge of the um, blade, that uh, jaggedy edge, and then a little white line. And so I want it. this really watered down this time. Let's find a clean spot here. Real transparent, just a wash. And I just want to create some tints in the shadow areas. Okay, so I want to go around the nose. Under the hat. And then just kind of drag that or um, scruff it up a little bit just so that I don't see a stopping point. But it doesn't need to be a smooth float because this will be underneath all of our lines. Um, around the mustache. Try and make that pop out and then there again, just kind of scruff that in a little bit. Just want to add, you know, a little bit of tints of color here and there, kind of adds to the shadows. Just try to get rid of any real hard edges, but it does not have to be smooth like you normally would float. 
then I just want to drag some here and there throughout the beard, some stripes. And just kind of wash them in. Kind of, it'll kind of help separate some of the wavy hair afterwards. Just kind of rough it in. Okay, now, if you're ever going to just get a few little colors in the tradition line, white is one of them because it has a better coverage than the um, Americana does. The reds are also more brilliant. So when it first came out, I just started adding a few little colors here and there till I finally had the whole line. Um, but a little goes a long way, so they last a lot longer. You don't need as much. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start with um, the white on the beard. I'd like to get that layer in there. Um, you can use a small rake brush. Now, like I, I said, I cut mine down to a one eighth inch size. If you don't have one that little, I really recommend you go to your liner brush. I think it'll be easier getting the individual lines. So this time when I do it, I want the tips of the um, mustache to be a little bit more distinguished, so a little bit brighter, okay? I want little tiny fine hairs coming towards the nose, but I don't want to lose my purple. If I do, I can go back, put purple in. And then I also want brighter tips on the bottom of the beard and just very sparse coming through the beard so I don't lose all my color. So the bottom tips of the mustache, bottom tips of the beard have the most white. Everything else is very sparse, but you want really thin lines. Now, to me, it's easier to turn it upside down. And I'm going to mix half paint, half water. And I'm going to use my rake that I cut into a 1 8 inch size. Okay, so for the mustache, I'm going to catch the tips first. I'm not even worried about getting all the way to the top. I really just want to accent the tips. Then I'll come back and follow through. Okay, so I've got those a little bit brighter. Now I'll follow through with some lines coming up to the nose, but try to keep them thin so no pressure. Just barely pull with your tips of your brush. And there again, this could be done with your liner brush instead. And I don't want it filled in solid. I still want to see those other colors. It's just more on the tips. So same thing on the other side. I'm going to do just the tips first. Then I'm going to pull a few fine lines up towards the nose. Now, if I would have started putting my brush down under the nose, I would have had a big glob of white there because when you first set your brush down, that's when you get the most paint off your brush. Okay, and I'll leave that alone. But do you see how I can still see purples and blues in between my white lines? So I have a really pretty, you know, combination of colors underneath those mustache lines. Okay, same thing with the bottom of the um, beard. I'm going to concentrate first on just getting the tips and kind of pull in different direct directions, give them a little bit curved this way, that way. So they're not all exactly the same.
Just concentrating on the very tips of the beard to start with. Get all that accented. Now, if you water down your paint too much, it's gonna be real transparent and you might need a second coat. I try to find that just in between stage. I want it to come off the brush, but still have a nice coat of paint. Okay, so I've got the tips. Now I want to get thinner lines coming all the way through the beard. but not filling it in. So I still want to be able to see my pretty colors underneath. And even on the sides, just do it very carefully because we don't want to lose all of our shadow, but we do need beard lines. So on each side of the mustache, we do need some lines, just keep it sparse. And then don't play in it too much because it'll just all keep soaking into each other. If you need another coat, it's better to let it dry before you try to put another coat on. And I think I'm gonna leave that alone. Turn it right side up for you. So I can still see little hairs, but it very sparse in the upper half. So I'm not losing all my shadows. And we can always go back, you know, and put the other colors back in if needed. And we still will do final liner brush lines um, at the end and do little flyaway hairs and curls and flips and things. This is just you know, just another stage. All right, so we're gonna continue on and we're gonna do more of the highlights then again. So we're gonna be looking at uh, photo number three for the highlight areas. Okay, I am gonna start with, let's see, where do I wanna start? Well, I'm gonna start with this hat part here, I think. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and use my smaller brush now for most of these areas, my double-ended. So I'm dipping both ends into extender, wiping it on the paper towel. A uh, little touch of extender into my white paint because it's been sitting there. I just don't want it, you know, too sloppy. I still want it uh, a little thicker texture. Pat that in. Okay, so for in my hat, in this center third, I want to come under that edge a little bit. Get some nice solid white in the middle, and then I'm going to soften those edges. So it's kind of like a, a big triangle. And then just soften that edge. wipe off the excess on my paper towel because I keep picking up more. Now, if it looks blotchy, let it dry a little bit and you can come back and do more. Sometimes I can get it right away. Um, another thing is uh, some of these areas, especially the white, um, an option that you would have, if I have a mop brush handy, you can take a mop brush 
and softly pull across to soften brush marks. I'm not blending, I'm, and I can go different directions, and what it does is it softens brush marks, okay? But it's a hat, so it's okay to have a little bit of texture in there. And then I want a little, I want a little circle, little dot in his nose off to the one side and then I'm going to soften the edges of that as well. You can also have just done a little uh, dry brush in there if you needed to. Okay, so in the bread, I want to go under the um, dark area, just kind of a line, and then soften that. Just soften that underside. So we're looking at photo number three on your on your printout. And just however many you had, um, probably all have different amounts of stripes. So whatever you had, it goes under the dark stripe just a line and then soften the bottom edge of it. Okay, now originally I put the highlight on the shoes in the middle of the strap and then I decided afterwards it didn't show up enough. Um, so I ended up later putting it on that top edge and then softening. It's always hard to take pictures step by step when you're designing because sometimes you decide later that you need to change a part of it. So the top edges and soften. And then we also have white on our knife, on the blade of the knife. I'm going to turn him, let's see, yeah, probably this way. Okay. Put a little, my, now my brush is getting dry because I've been, you know, using it. So I add a little touch of extender to help loosen the dried paint off of my brush and then pick up more. And so on the blade, I want to get those little um, jagged edges there and then soften that. And if I accidentally, you know, cover up some of my black lines, I'll go back and add those back in. So just tucking some white in the tips of the jagged edges.
a little bit on the top here too. And I think so far we've been lucky we haven't uh, lost anybody on the internet. That helps those to stand out a little bit better. Okay, and then I'm gonna really thin down the white what's left on my brush. I'll just add more extender, thin it down, and I'm just gonna pull a skinny line. I'm not gonna blend it. Just gonna pull a skinny line down for a little bit more of a shine. And then I will touch up a couple of those black edges that I messed into. Now on the uh, mittens, I want to get a highlight in the center, and really that color that I originally mixed was uh, would be just fine. And I can use either white. So I'll take my brilliant purple and either white, and my, my brighter white is not as dried out, so I'm going to use that. And just mix a lighter purple color. put that in the middle and then soften around. You could also do this as a dry brush to add it in there if you like doing dry brushes. Just wanna add some highlight in the middle of the mittens. I do have a little touch of extender in the paint. So just fill in a, a good portion of the mitten. Don't make it too skinny or when you blend it, it um, it'll just look like a pinhead. You want it to come out a ways. And if I get too much, I can go back the opposite way and I could put the brilliant purple around the edge and then soften. And then I think we should do our toenails. And we just want white on the tips of the toenails. And then think everything will get uh, outlined after with some burnt sienna. So I'll just still use my double-ended brush here, get some white. And Let's see, this big toe on the one side, come across that top edge and down in a little bit. So I just want to get the tip of it, almost like you're making a French nail. And then when we outline, you'll be able to see the bottom edge of that. So kind of giving him French toenails. He's got fancy toes. So French toenail and soften the bottom edge. Okay. 
I think this guy's only going to have. Yeah, he only had four toes to begin with. OK. I was going to say, I'm only doing four toes on them, but yeah, I did that on the original, too. Got four piggy toes. And then if you want, you can actually outline uh, between the toes and then the bottom edge of your toenail with burnt sienna. Just use a liner brush and uh, water because we're not going to blend the line. We're just going to outline. So thin down burnt sienna, half paint, half water. And you can go ahead and outline between your toes. Give a little bottom edge to your toenail. Just doing some cleanup. It's getting harder and harder for me to see that little detail these days. You're going to do a little wash of burnt sienna in the same shadow areas as you did um, the first shadows. Only if you feel you need more contrast. But if you have enough contrast from the first time around, leave it alone. But I like to have everything exaggerated. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little wash, burnt sienna, right where I originally put all the shadows. So the back of the heel, between the straps, bottom of the toe. So it's it's actually your final step for your on your foot, but as long as we're in that area and using that color, we might as well get that part done. A little black line to separate. Um, let's see, right through here, right between that coral strap and the bottom section. You could do a black outline. It just helps clean it up a little bit. Okay, then we're going to go up to our hat. Um, and we're going to get some highlights in there. OK, now the highlights are going to go in all these center areas of the coral. And I don't want you to get too carried away. I don't want you to jump too much in contrast with that. Um, so if you take your coral color and put a little bit of white into it, just make it a little bit lighter than what originally was in there. I just wanted it to look puffier. And so I did center highlights here and there. I'm going to go back to my larger brush, though, because I want to make sure that I really get that to blend good. Uh, whenever I mix a color, I always check, see if half and half works. And then I adjust it from there, make it lighter or darker. Because half and half is an easy recipe to always remember. It's an easy recipe to match.
but if half and half is is not quite right then i'll add one more scoop of whether it needs to go lighter or darker to adjust it so then it's two to one but starting with half and half is always the first step then i can go two to one or three to one uh depending on you know how much lighter i need it so i'm going to start out with half and half and honestly i think that's going to be just right so I'm going to put a little touch of extender in there. Okay. Now I want to get some puffy areas. So I'm going to add some of this in and then I want to go all the way around and soften that in, soften the outer edges. And make them different shapes. Don't, and they're, I know I got shine there. There we go. Make them different shapes. Don't make it all the same, but any of the center areas where it's the lightest, this can go. It can be circles. It can be, you know, kidney bean shaped. It could be, you know, all kinds of things, but we want it to puff up. Make it uh, more dimensional. Try to stay out of your shadow with this color you can stay only in the the main coral and if it gets into the shadow just wipe it out it'll wipe out so anywhere there is coral is fair game There again, if it's a little bit on the blotchy side, it's okay. This is fabric. It's not a satin ribbon. So it's okay to have a little bit of texture. But I just kind of hit and miss adding it into different sections just to create some puffs. There again, I could have dry brushed this in. But to me, this would be hard doing with a uh, corner load of a brush because you're doing center areas. And that's why I like doing it this way because otherwise your hand is having to twist all different directions and you can do it and that's the way I used to do it. I'll just find this a little bit easier now. I'm just wiping off the extra paint as I go along. Jill, I like this way you're doing it. Thank you. I do too. That seems like it's fun. It is. It's, it's, you know, it is so much easier. And it's like you're blending with oils. Right. You know, and you can put it right where you want it. It can go in the middle, it can go on an edge. And you can uh, use more paint, so you're not having to do as many coats. Well, when you're having a bad floating day anyway, this would be great because. Yeah, this one that hates to float, this is what they need to try. Yep. Because that's, you know, one of the reasons I did it to try to make it a little bit easier. And I've had to do less correcting when I'm actually in a physical class, less correcting on people's pieces if they try this.
Okay, now, now I want to pay attention to any of the pencil lines I have, and I want to try to camouflage them now because I want them to go away. So I'm going to concentrate now on whatever color I need to use to camouflage. So sometimes it's going to be the light. Sometimes I got to go back to my shadow color. Sometimes I might have to go back to um, my coral color. So right now I'm going to concentrate on hiding any graphite lines because I want them to go away. So I'm going to go back to my just plain coral because I have a, a spot here where I need to get closer to the line because the line went right in the middle of my shadow. So I couldn't cover it that way. So I need to crop off my shadow. So bring that coral back into the graphite line so I can cover it. So any areas too, if you got too carried away with one color or another, here's a way to kind of get in and soften and adjust. Because you can go back and forth with any of the colors used in here. Play with them a little bit. And then remember, I'm still gonna I'm gonna be stenciling little polka dots on top. So a lot of the stuff that you worry about is gonna go away. It's gonna get covered up by the dots probably. Yeah, and I'm just yeah. I just uh, toned down some of the naphtha red. So any bright red that you have, and I I just toned it down a little bit with a little touch of burnt sienna is what it is. Another thing that would be pretty on here, um, quinacridone violet or a red violet is a pretty contrast with the coral. You could try that, you know, for your uh, color. But all we want to do is we want to deepen um, or just tint a little bit more in the deepest shadow areas in the bottom of the hat. I would not extend all the way up the fold, maybe a little ways, but not all the way up, but more in the bottom. You could hit or miss a little in the top if you want to. That's Now this is where it has to be your own. These tints have to be something you like. Um, and it's just to add more color. Um, so I also added some yellow tint in mine. If you're trying to stay more red, don't do the yellow tint, stay more red, okay? Um, so it's just now adding some, and I think that was Indian yellow I tinted with, but first I'm gonna start with the, um, with the darker. So I'll use a little bit of red and burnt sienna to make a darker red, like a burgundy, that's what it is, like a burgundy. So if you have burgundy deep, that would probably work. Isn't that what it's called in Americana? Burgundy deep or deep burgundy? I might be saying it back, deep burgundy. Yeah, that would work. All right, and I'm just gonna get, um, I'm gonna turn it upside down here. I just wanna get in these bottom sections. So if you take a look, I've got, I'm tucking it into that little corner and kind of rounding it, pull it up a little bit skinny, and then I'm going to soften that. And I'm going to do that in the bottom of, of the folds just to deepen them, a little, deepen them a little bit more. So tuck it into that little corner, pull a little ways up, but keep it rounded where it touches the fold the other part of the fold and just kind of soften that away. All 
we go. Gonna do that on both sides. So I'll tuck it into that little crevice. And soften. Kind of rounding out the puffs a little bit. Is that showing up on the camera? Hopefully. Yes. Looking good. Yeah. Okay. So just mostly at across the bottom there, just making the the deeper areas even deeper. Up to you. Um, mine looks a little too light now, so I am going to pull a little bit across, tuck some into that center one too, just so it doesn't look so stark. A little bit in the bottom. And then if I want more depth, in the top of my hat, I could put a little bit in some of those sections, but really keep it mostly just right on the edge. So I would just put a little tiny spot on the edge right in the middle of um, a shadow area. Just to add a little more depth, but I don't want it uh, to come out as far as I did my first color. And then I decided I wanted a little tint of yellow in mine, so I uh, just put some here and there just to change the color a little bit. You don't have to do the yellow tint. If you like it like this, leave it alone. I was just pulling up some of the yellow from the bottom area um, just to kind of blend it a little bit. So I took Indian yellow, I believe. And made a little bit more of a wash with that. And it's transparent anyway. And just kind of hit and miss anywhere, uh, just anywhere you wanted to get a little tint of color. And then just kind of soften it. It blends in nice because it's a transparent color. So it's kind of like I'm glazing, you know, the color in. because I just never know when to stop. I just love playing with the colors. Orangey kind of yellow. So anything that you have that's close, but uh, Indian yellow. So kind of, a, so if you took yellow and put a little touch of orange in it, you'd be just fine, yeah. And I probably could have used the marigold. I just knew that this one's more transparent. And so it's a little bit nicer because I'm not covering up what I already have. I'm just tinting it, adding to it, if that makes sense. But see how that just kind of, I don't know, I think it kind of softens it and it just gives it more, more depth, more texture. On the, um, brim of the hat, I need some burnt sienna on each side. I'm actually just going to go ahead and float it on this time on the outer edge. I just want a little more darkness. Use it sparingly. You don't want a lot. So just a corner load. And I, I do, I put the extender in there just to 
just in case I need it to blend better, but I'm gonna put a little bit of burnt sienna on each side of that gold. Flip it so I can do the other side. Okay, so burnt sienna on each side of the brim of the hat. And while you have that on your brush, get a little bit on the outside edge of the nose too. Off to the left. Okay, I'm gonna use the, um, you can use, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna use the Indian yellow and I'm gonna make kind of a, a little bit of a thick line going across the bottom of the hat with my liner. So I get kind of a ridge. So a little bit of a ridge going on the bottom of the hat. So I use the Indian yellow. I could have used, I could have used the marigold. So if that's all you've got, go ahead, use that. That's fine too. So marigold ridge, and then I added some white and I, I think it's not gonna to hurt to do it while it's wet, but I wanted white across the top and let it just kind of fade off to each side. So just really lighten up on your stroke on each side, more solid right above the nose, and then just pull little feathery strokes towards the other side. I went down a little too far right there. I'm gonna just get that off real quick. And just touch my nose back up. There, so we have a brighter white highlight right above the nose. So it makes that pop out more. I want to clean that one side up one more time here. There we go. Okay, so for the bread, I'm gonna be using burnt sienna. Um, and I'm actually gonna use my angle brush this time uh, because I like to use the little chisel to create the lines in between the stripes of the uh, bread itself. I put some tints with Paranon orange and some with, Indian yellow to brighten the crust and then deepen the shadow with burnt sienna. Okay, so Paranon orange is just a really, really bright orange. So whatever your brightest orange is, I did some of that and I did some yellow and and then a little burnt sienna to deepen if I need to. So um it looks to me like i have more of the yellow tint off to 
the right side. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to turn them upside down so I can get it a little better. I'm just going to use um, the small angle uh, brush and just get a little corner load of the Indian yellow. And I'm just kind of patting it into the uh, left side of the bread here. It's a very transparent color. So it should blend in nicely, just gives it a little subtle tint, warms it up a little bit. So off to the, it's on the right side of the bread. Just tap in some yellow for the crust. Does not need to be smooth because the uh, crust has texture. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing on the other side with the orange, but I want to get a little bit more of a definite uh, edge to create those, uh, the crust. So you have your, um, you have your stripes. Now under the white, if you leave some space, if I tap in on the top of the other stripe under that, and a little bit on the outer edges, I'll start creating those uh, sections a little bit, but it'll be the burnt sienna that pulls it together. So kind of, I guess just, you know, we can actually just go kind of tap it in between. We'll, we'll take care of the, cru uh, the crust edges with the burnt sienna. So let's just go ahead and tap that orange a little bit in between each of those stripes, a little bit on the edge, not too carried away, just a little bit to warm it up. So I'm gonna thin my burnt sienna with extender, half paint, half extender so that I'll be able to get some skinnier lines. All right, so here's what I wanna do. I wanna kind of create just some broken lines to kind of create that crust and then just kind of tap them to make them a little bit more subtle. So not a hard outline, um, and let's see if I can get even closer. Really zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just kind of tapping in some broken lines, creating those slices, and then softening. Just kind of tap to soften that not smoothing it because I, I want the texture in there for the crust and they can all be just slightly different so just kind of tapping with the tip and if you need to be using a liner brush for this you sure can but having that little bit of extender in there gives you time to soften it and you see how i'm not creating a edge on the right side of the bread only on the left I'm leaving that kind of open-ended on the other side. And just broken little lines, tap it in. And then I'm gonna add some more along the outer edge there again, just kind of tapping it in this time so that I, and, th and this time it can be a little bit more of a stipple uh, so I get the texture of the bread rather than smoothing it like we did for the other blending. Just kind of tap that in along that back side. And you can tap with your blending brush. And I think I'll leave it alone, call it a day. I, I have a little hair coming over here. I'm going to just Take care of that by adding a little shadow there to compensate. Little uh, detail. Now when I zoom it like this, 
can't see it with my regular eyes, but um, any of the little areas that you may have gone outside the edges, um, you'll just want to take your background color, you know, and clean those up. No, I couldn't see this just normally, but if I wanted to clean up, you know, next to my knife here, uh, anywhere that I may have gone outside the line, maybe I want to go around the edge of the bread here. You know, clean that up with your background color. It'll all pull together. So final details on the beard are all done with the liner brush. So if you look at your final picture, um, I'm just going to use the brightest white. Use your liner. Thin it with a little water, but I want it um, a little bit thicker this time, so I have a little bit um, heavier line or um, more opaque line is what I should say. I don't want it transparent. I always like to pull from the tips up. Um, so I'm going to start with the mustache. And I'm just going to add, I, there again, I start with the tips and then I'll follow through with longer lines after. But I think it, when you concentrate too much on pulling the line all the way through, you don't get the tips the way you want them to be. Okay, now I want to make sure I have a little bit more kind of outlining my mustache, but not making it look totally outlined. So when I do that, I'm doing it a little bit more sketchy, not trying to pull total complete lines. And then pull some in away from the edge as well, but try not to lose all that dark up there. Okay, now I want to get more white coming from the tips up. So I did the tips, I did the outer edges, and now I'm gonna slowly pull some a little bit higher up from the tips. So the bottom half is gonna be brighter white and try not to lose my shadows near the nose. Same thing on the other side. Get myself some tips. Give little curls here and there if you want. Or they could be wiggly. Everybody pulls their stroke a little bit different. Everyone's beard is going to be totally different and their mustache. And that's okay. It's kind of like your signature. Nobody signs their name exactly the same way. Same when you paint, your strokes are all going to be slightly different. So I get the tips, I get the edges, but there again, I'm, I'm doing, you know, shorter strokes, but they're following through in the same curve. And then I'll pull more up from the bottom towards the nose. There again, I work on the, the tips. And if I want, I can start adding some little wavy wiggles now too. It doesn't have to all be straight lines anymore. But try not to lose all the pretty colors that you see throughout the beard. He doesn't have to have a totally white beard because he's a gnome, he's not a Santa. He could have a gray beard, he can have purple, he can have blue, he can have any color you want. And the more colors you can see, the more depth I think you get. I'm just gonna add some wiggles here and there just to kind of break it up, some little flyaway hairs.
And every time I do it, it comes out totally different, never to the same. But that's okay. I'm going to get a few little ones just in the center area here between the mustache and the bread. I don't want it to go to the extreme. Just some little lines in the middle. Same on the other side. Just through the middle. And more on the tips. And I think I'll turn them around again. See, see what I can see. Get the little curls. So whatever you need to do to flip it around just to get a better angle for your brushes. And it's always good to get back away from it every so often. Hold it back away, arm's length away from you um, so that you can see in a different perspective. The other thing that really works nice is um, take your camera out and take a picture. You can see the detail better. You can see the depth. You can see your contrast better than you can see just looking at it. And there's some, a lot of times you think you, you know, you're not quite happy with it. You take a pic, look at it through your, your phone camera. Huge difference. You can really see the contrast better then because we're just too close to it right now. And you've been working on it for a while and your eyes kind of get a little heavy here and there. And I'm probably kind of liking just leaving it like that. I might need just a little more in this part of the mustache to make it pop up. A little bit heavier just in that bottom third. Because I want the mustache to pop out away from the beard. And you always have the option if you needed to add more shading, you sure could, you know, if you needed to, to deepen anything. I think I must have put my finger in the uh, highlight in the nose. I'm going to just touch that up real quick here. Get that a little brighter. Now, if I wanted, um, if I wanted this band to show up even more, I could put. In fact, maybe I'll do that. I could put a burnt sienna uh, wash or a little line, little blend above it. Let's thin down the burnt sienna with some extender, and I could be like outline above that let's see I, I know i'm getting a shine here let's see if that shows better outline above that kind of transition it into my shadow and just soften that just so that it gives a little bit more or you could just outline it straight outline it with burnt sienna that would work too 
get a little bit more coming in from each side, I think. That makes it pop a little more. A little more on the other side again, I think. A little more contrast. Okay, that makes it stand out a little bit more, I think. Um, now, I do feel like I want a little bit more shadow right under the hat and kind of around the nose. So I am going to go back with my purple one more time, but I'm, I'm going to try and do it carefully. I'm going to thin it with the extender. Try not to get it too juicy here. A lot of times at the end, what happens is I, I start hurrying and then I get too much extender and I gotta be careful, I gotta slow myself down. Okay, so let's see. So right in this crevice here, I really want that darker right under the hat. And then just soften that. I'm gonna do that on each side. See how that really pushes um, the hat back away. Or you, it looks like you're looking in under into a shadow better. It just gives it a little bit more depth, not quite so flat looking. Just kind of taper it out to the edge. Tuck that in there. We wanna get make sure all that extender, anyone that used extender, I wanna make sure that that is totally dry because then we're ready for our stencil and our uh, lettering. There we go. Okay, so when you load this brush, you're gonna really squish a lot of paint way into all the brush uh, bristles. Really load that up, lots and lots of paint. Okay, then you're going to take that and pinch it between your towel and get every bit off. And a lot of times I'll even do just a little test to make sure there's no globs. So it really looks like you've got nothing on there again. So you're using it totally dry. Okay, and I gotta, I know my light is shined there, maybe like that. No pressure, no pouncing. Gentle, gentle circle and no pressure whatsoever. Gentle circle and you can go different directions. Just a gentle, gentle circle. A little goes a long way. Okay, now I'm gonna just peek. See how nice that does? Okay, so you really have to just really load it the way I, I show you and I'll, I'll do it again after but absolutely no pressure. I'm just going over all the little circles. Try to uh, stay within the hat. Try not to go into the band. Try not to go into the outer edge. If you do, you can do, you know, you can do cleanup, but um, just trying to stay more in the middle of the, the hat. If there's like a circle that's halfway off, I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to do that one because I don't want to go outside the lines and have to do cleanup if I don't have to. And when you're doing this, it looks like nothing's coming off, but it is. I've got one dot here. I see I need a little more. There we go. 
nice, crisp, sharp edges. And it's because you're using the paint dry. You're taking every bit of it off on your towel. Okay, so the same is for the uh, stencil for around the outer edge. This is just a, a swirly stencil. And I'm just going to put it, you know, different angles. Um, I don't think I started in, I think I started with, I think I wanted one that looked like it was coming up in the handle. And that's how I started this one. Just kind of tip it. Now this one, I'm gonna do um, medium white. And I'm gonna use the smaller brush because I'm gonna have a little bit more control. I'm done with this one. I'm gonna put it in water till I have time to clean it good. So I'm starting with another brush because I've got another color here. Um, I could have used the same color on the hat. I just didn't. Uh, so either one is, is good, but let me tape that on. And I'm just gonna tip this all different directions. I love this little swirly pattern on here. Okay, there again, I'm gonna really load this brush up, really squish that in to all the bristles. Okay, paper towel. Pinch it between the paper towel and really pinch all that extra paint out of there. Okay, and then light, light, swirl. Am I on camera? Here we go. Light little swirl and you can go different directions, but a little is gonna go a long way. Don't push too hard. I'm gonna be careful to stay away from my gnome. Try not to get too close. Don't worry if, uh, I don't even care if every design has the same amount of color, you know, every swirl. I don't mind if it's some are, you know, paler than others. It's just kind of a modeled stencil background. And then whenever I run out of design, I'll, flip my stencil pattern around. Probably stop about there. Okay, let's take a peek. See how cool that is? And I just kind of try to stay away from the hat. And then I'll, I'll just keep repositioning it, you know, different areas just to come up with uh, a design, just kind of get it to blend in here and there. See what I want here. Let's turn it upside down. Let's see, let's do maybe, maybe about there. Okay, um, whenever you reload, make sure you pinch that off. Don't push down so hard. Make sure that I have a, just light swirls. and pull it off. And I'm just gonna do little bits at a time, you know, just kind of pick the parts of the design that I want in the different areas, just kind of line it up to whatever I want. Little goes a long way. It's amazing how far one brush load will go. But stay out of the water, pinch all the excess off, and then it doesn't leak underneath your design. And don't pounce. Pouncing causes it to go underneath the design too. So just swirls. And I'm gonna stop about there and reposition. So I, I just keep going till, you know, I get 
as much design on there as I want and just keep repositioning it. I could have done dots all over the background. I could do any kind of swirly design. I could do plaid. I could do, you know, just be creative, use whatever you want. Um, but I just kept it soft uh, and I used the medium white. I could have used a paler shade of the uh, Green Lagoon. That would have been pretty also. Could have done that. Now, as you go, a lot of times you get in a hurry and you don't pinch it off as much. So don't do what I do. <laughs> do. Do what I say, not as I do. Just remember, take your time, pinch that extra off. And I'll reposition, just got to find a, a design I like here. So I can even just do one little swirl at a time if I want. I want that little one right there. Am I on camera? Okay. And just keep moving it around. Yeah, Sandy McTeer and, and Tracy have some really cool stencil uh, patterns. Um, I have only a couple of theirs on my site, but I didn't get this one up there yet, so need to go to theirs. But I think I'll probably end up carrying this one too. Love the swirl. Okay, a little more up here somewhere. Let's do that. So just, you know, piece it around, make it fit. I feel like I want a little something in between the blade and I'm gonna just pick out something little here that I can sneak in there. There's a little, just be careful that fit you know so if you have any holes pick out a little a little piece to put in there and i'll finish getting up here let's see what do i want maybe that one up there And I'm going to get some more on here. Pinch it off. Line it up again. And let's see if there's any holes I want to fill. I'm gonna get a little little spot right here, I think. Otherwise, that's basically it for the stenciling. get little spots. It, it's pretty easy if you follow those tips. Um, I have never in the past, like I said, been able to stencil this easy before. This brush makes a huge difference. Staying out of the water makes a huge difference. Um, and not pouncing, just doing a swirl and no pressure. It really, because I got to tell you, you can watch my four-year-old do this on that YouTube uh, uh, picture that she did. She did stenciling. So if a four-year-old can do it, anybody can. So, uh, and then it's just the lettering and um, I just used a liner brush. Now I do want to show you, um, there is 
In addition to a liner, there is what's called a rigger. And a rigger, uh, when you pinch it, it is flat on the tips rather than pointy. And it's a little easier for lettering. I'm going to get a little closer now. Okay. All right. So for the, and I need to look at the lettering because I'm not quite sure what I did originally. So I'm going to use the rigger just to show you this. So when I load up the rigger, I'm patting the, patting the paint in there. And this one is a, um, is this a 10 odd, I believe. 10 aught, 10 aught rigger. Um, and it comes in all different sizes. So it's really nice to have the different sizes. And man, my eyes are, are giving out on me now. Let's see here if I can see. Okay, so when I do this, I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna not do the entire letter at a time. I'm gonna hold it so I pull down, it's gonna be fat, and then I chisel it when I stop at the bottom. Okay, so I'm flattening it so it is spread out a little bit more. Chisel it so that it goes skinny. Okay, I'm going to skip to the H. I'm going to kind of come across and down. Get more paint, kind of flatten it. I'm going to come down this part of the H because that I want fatter. I'm, I'm going to hold off on the skinny parts. I'm going to get the fat areas first. Make this part fat on the O. I'll make, and I'm not watering this down. I'm using it fresh from the bottle. And then skinny and fat. Okay, then I'm actually going to switch to my other um, liner just because my eyes are giving out on me and I can't see the point. I just want to make sure that I go. Now I'm just going to connect everything and get the skinnier lines. Now I could have done it with the liner and just pressed down harder. But now I just connect it all. So I don't try to do it all in one stroke like you would for handwriting, if that makes sense. So there we have the chop chop. Um, the only other thing that I see on my knife, I wanted the top edges of those blades to show up a little better. I'm just going to put a little white solid line on the top edge with the titanium white and the liner just to accent that one more time. There we go. So there you have it. Now, on my original, to varnish it, um, I used the DecoArt Soft Touch Varnish. It's just a very velvety feel. You could use whatever you have. You can use, you know, anything that you like that you're, you know, that you um, are familiar with. But here's another thing to put on your wish list. You know, the, I, I, I really like the feel of this on the piece afterwards. It was just a nice smooth. Um, and I use it, um, you know, on some furniture things too that I've done in the past and use this for the varnish on it. So uh, just, just another, another option. So anyway, that basically is all the details for our Chop Chop Gnome.